It's Matthew Graves here from Quick Start Coach, and I am talking to you tonight about how to get more results from your online business. I've been thinking a lot about how in these kind of crazy times going on in the world right now, how I can be of more assistance to the people uh, that I speak to in my business and also to people out there who are trying to deal with a rapidly changing world and who want to go online and create home-based businesses or make money from home to kind of help to free themselves from all these ties that they have and get more freedom in their life. And that's something that I've really benefited from for the last 20 years of my life uh, that I've been working online, running my own business since uh, 2001. And my specialty is that I help people with traffic and conversions and how they can do that to get more results in their business. Because ultimately, when you're operating your business or you're trying to make money for online from home, you, know, you want more results. You want more signups and more sales for whatever you're trying to sell. Or you want to be able to have more visitors, more traffic, more attention on the messages that you're trying to share with the world. And that's my specialty. That's what I have been working in for the last 20 years in helping people to be able to get more attention on their offers and come up with offers that get people to actually convert. So what I'm doing here with these traffic wise series of workshops is I'm each day, I'm going to go online live just as I am here right now. And I'm going to share some of what I've learned about how you can get more results in your online business because I've been doing it for a long time and I've picked up a lot of things along the way. And I hope that that's going to be able to help you. So I'm gonna to try to keep these sessions fairly short. They won't be as long as some of the workshops that I normally do that can last an hour or longer. So, but it will be broken into different sections. So we're gonna start out tonight talking a little bit about the fundamentals of getting more traffic and getting more results. Because a lot of people don't come about thinking about it in the right way. And that's why they're not able to really kind of get a lot of things later in the process about figuring out where the best traffic sources are or exactly how to craft an ideal offer because you have to come at it from the right perspective if you wanna get the right result out the other end. And that perspective is what I wanna share with you tonight. So if you want more results in your business, then what you really need is you need more traffic and you need an irresistible offer. Because we spend a lot of time talking about traffic and conversion. So when I'm talking about traffic, I mean visitors. You need visitors to come to your web page. You need visitors to come to your lead capture pages if you're trying to collect email addresses or to your sales pages if you're trying to sell a product. So that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about website traffic. And you need that traffic to be from the right people who are going to be interested in your offer. And then the, a lot of the overlooked part that a lot of beginners struggle with is looking at the offer itself. A lot of times the reason that people aren't getting the results they want is because their offer just isn't very compelling. So I'm going to help you tonight by getting you on track for creating an irresistible offer. And that's, we'll do that in even more detail in future videos and workshops in this series. So like I said, a lot of the success online comes down to traffic and conversions. So what do I mean by a conversion? Well, when a website visitor comes to your site, you want him to take some form of action. That's why he's there. You want him to subscribe to your email list. You want him to buy your product. You want him to read your blog post or watch your video. You have a visitor and you want them to perform an action. And when they perform that action, that's what we call a conversion. So when someone comes to your website and you're offering a free report to get them to subscribe to your email list, well, if they fill in their name and email address and get that report, that's a conversion. If you're offering a product for sale and you have a prospect who ends up on your sales page, 
Well, if they buy that product, that action you're trying to get them to take, that's a conversion. So when I talk about really focusing on traffic and conversions, you know, that's what I'm talking about. It's getting those website visitors to the pages you want them to in the first place, and then getting them to convert by taking some action that you want them to take that is the next step in the process. That action isn't always necessarily to make a sale right away. Maybe that action is you just want them to take the next step in the process, especially if you're selling a larger ticket item. You know, you may they may need to go through several steps to get to the point where they'll actually make the purchase. So they might go through several conversions to get to the point where they actually buy. The first thing you might want them to do is to subscribe to your email list. Then maybe you want them to attend a webinar. Well, that's another conversion to go from an email subscriber to a webinar subscriber. Then when they're in the webinar, you want them to buy the product. That's going from a webinar attendee to a, an actual paying customer. The, each one of those stages is a conversion. And getting really good at conversions is the key to success. Because frankly, traffic is expensive. You can't afford to get enormous sums of traffic that are not getting results. You need the traffic that you are sending to your page to actually convert. So the better you are converting, the more you can pay for traffic if you're buying traffic, or the more you can make use of the free traffic that's coming in because you're able to generate more revenue for every visitor on average. And we'll talk about that a little later in the series in the future video. So what you have to remember is that when you're trying to go out there and you're trying to get more results, what it really is all about is it's all about attention. You need to get the attention of your ideal prospect. And then you need to hold that attention long enough to be able to actually either educate or motivate them to want to do business with you. And usually that's not a single step process anymore, as I mentioned earlier. It's not a question of getting their attention, educating them, and then they buy right then. You might want to get their attention, get them on the email list, and get their attention multiple times or be a social media multiple times in order to complete the process of educating them in order to uh, want to do business with you. So, But you've got to get the attention and you've got to hold it. And that's harder and harder to do in today's world because there's so many other things competing for their attention. We have less attention span than a goldfish these days. So getting and holding that attention is difficult and it's but it needs to be the focus the overlying focus of what you're doing because you have to remember that essentially all marketing is applied human psychology so when you're going out there and you're trying to market your product you're trying to actually use human psychology to to uh in order to get someone to actually comply and do what you want them to do. So you're gonna use human psychology in order to get their attention in the first place, in order to break them out of that trance and get them to pay attention to your page. And then you're gonna use human psychology to get them to opt in or to purchase the product. You know, the different principles, a lot of the principles of human psychology and influence are what the most successful marketers and sellers do online. They're taking those principles of human psychology and they're applying them to get someone to take action. And that's a lot, the foundation of a lot of the, sorry about that. Sorry. Oh, it's live, live from home today, just as we're self-quarantining. Um, so you're using human psychology to be able to get people to take action on the things that you want them to do. Um, now, when you're using the psychology, what you want to do is do something that a very famous marketer used to say, and that is that you want to enter the conversation that is already going on in their head. So you're not trying to get someone who has no interest in your product or your service or the problem you help solve to feel like they have a problem they don't already have. 
You want something that they are already thinking about, and then you want to help them solve that problem. And so they are already thinking about all kinds of different things. And most people spend their time thinking about one of two different things. All of us spend, you know, the majority of our time thinking about problems that we have, but don't want, or goals that we want, but don't have. So just think about that for a minute. Think about what do you spend most of your time thinking about? Most of the time you spend thinking about, well, you have a problem that you want to solve, or there's something that you want to achieve. You want to make more money. You want a nicer car. You want a nicer house. You want more money in the bank. You want health for your family. You want to be healthier. You want to lose weight. You have goals that you want to achieve. And we spend almost all of our waking and I think even a lot of our sleep time thinking about those two things. And that is the key to getting inside that conversation that's already going on in their head. You don't want to try to convince someone that they need to lose weight if you're a fitness coach. What you want to do is take the people who already know, who are already thinking, waking up in the morning, feeling tired and lethargic and thinking, I really need to get in better shape because I don't feel well. That's a conversation that's already going on in their head. You don't want to convince people who aren't thinking about it to think that. You want to find the people that are already thinking it. And then you want to enter that conversation. And we do that by getting their attention and converge, and we ultimately the conversions by promising to help them with those things. So when we promise that we're going to help solve their problems, or we show them a product or free report or something that is going to help solve that number one problem that's keeping them up at night, they're going to pay attention. That's how you get somebody's attention. You provide a compelling way to help solve their problem or to achieve the goal that they want but don't have yet. And that's entering the conversation. So now this person who's thinking about, and I'll use losing weight as an example, this person who's thinking about, I really need to lose some weight, but hasn't really thought about exactly, you know, how they're going to do that or whatever. Well, when they're browsing through Facebook and they see your Facebook ad and the Facebook ad is, is something along the lines of, of you know, uh, click here to discover the secret way to lose 10 pounds without dieting. They're like, oh, wow, I really want to lose 10 pounds, right? You're not convincing someone that they want to lose 10 pounds. You're taking the people who already know they want to lose 10 pounds and you're offering a potential solution. So they go ahead and they click on that ad. You got that conversion on that ad because you promised to help them with either a problem they have and don't want or a goal that they want and, and don't have yet. So it comes down to that kind of basics of getting that attention by making those promises. So to do that, the first thing that you have to do is you have to know your ideal prospect. Who is your ideal prospect? Who is the target market that you're trying to target and get access to and sell to right now? Now, the reality is, if you said, we stick with the example of losing weight, if you said, well, I help people get better shape, I help them lose weight, well, then you could say, well, you know, my target prospect could be anybody, anybody who wants to lose weight. There's hundreds of millions of people who would like to lose weight, I could help anybody. But it's better if you break it down, if you break it down. Because if you go out there and you're just trying to say, look, I help people lose weight. Hey, want to lose 10 pounds? Talk to me. There's so many people and so many different uh, offers out there to help them do that. They could use Nutrisystem. They could use Weight Watchers. Everybody out there is fighting for that market. People with a lot bigger marketing budgets and a lot more marketing know-how than any of us have. So it's a lot better if you niche it down, as they say, and you pick one target prospect, one target market that you want to shoot for. So rather than saying, I'm going to help everybody who's going to lose weight, 
maybe your target market is I'm going to help uh, women between 25 and 45 who just had a baby and want to lose the baby weight. And I'm going to come up with a program and marketing which is targeted specifically for that very narrow niche. Now, the reality is, if you went and you did the research, well, there's millions of people that fit in that niche. You don't need 100 million people and to try to appeal to everyone. You need a narrow niche that you can dominate, that you can really stand out in. You can't stand out against the Weight Watchers and the Nutra systems of the world, but you can stand out if you narrow down your market. So if that's your market, look, I help women who just gave birth and want to get back in shape and lose the baby weight, well, then your marketing will all talk about things that would be attractive to that person. So you could have pictures of a mother holding a baby in your ads. And, and what's going to happen is a, uh, someone who's just had a child, those kind of ads are going to get their attention because they're going to, that is something that they're hyper vigilant about in their in their attention right now is babies so when they see babies it's going to catch their eye and they're going to stop and take a look at it and when they that's how you get their initial attention because it's tuned just for them it doesn't just say hey want to lose 10 pounds it says hey if you just had a baby and you want to lose the baby weight and get back in the shape before you were pregnant then we can help you with that well when someone who's in that target niche sees that ad, what's going to go through their mind is, that's for me. And that's what's going to get them to click. Generic messages do not get people's attention. Specific messages to a person's individual situation do. So you have to choose a single target market, and then you have to research and get to know that market. What exactly is it that people in that market are looking for? Who is this person that you're targeting? What age range are they? What gender are they? Um, what are the things that are going through their mind right now? What are their insecurities? What are the things that they want to accomplish? You know, how, how does having this problem or wanting to achieve this goal make them feel? How would they feel after they've achieved that goal? Because all of those things help to create your marketing message to reach that person and to motivate them. If you talk about how great it's going to be after they've accomplished this goal, what their change in their life is going to be like. Wouldn't you like to have this life instead if once you accomplish this goal? How do you feel right now that makes you feel bad? And you, know, and you talk about that that's going to connect with them in a way which is going to get them interested in what you have to say. You have to know who they are. So it's good to create a customer ideal prospect or customer avatar. Who is this person? What is every tribute? What, where do they live? Like I said, all their demographics of their age and et cetera, like all of these things that go into um, what motivates them because remember, applied human psychology. So you've got to get inside their head and you can't get inside somebody's head if you don't know what they're thinking about. So you need to pick that person you're looking for and then get to know them very well. Then the next thing that you have to look at is to say, okay, well, this is my ideal prospect. Where can I get access to these people? How can I get my message in front of them? Because you need a niche that is easily accessible a niche that you can actually target. So if your niche was um, moms who just recently gave birth, how, how are you going to get those ads in front of those people? Well, maybe you're going to use Facebook ads and you're going to use Facebook targeting and you can target females between a particular age range who have a particular interest. You know, there's all kinds of targeting that you can do to get your message in front of those ideal people. It wouldn't do any good for you to run your ads looking for young moms on the uh, on on a retirement website or a trucker website or something like that. That's not where you're going to find most of those people. You're going to be looking for well, you know, what magazines do they read? What websites do they visit? 
if you're looking online for Facebook, well, who do they follow? Who are the influencers on the different social media platforms mm -hmm. in the, that niche of that particular area? Because then you can target your ad to people who follow those particular people. And then you know your ad is getting in front of the right people. You're not spending money to have your ad seen by people who are not even in your target market. So you have to figure out how you're gonna get access to them. And when you get access to them, now you're going to be having this traffic come in. So I just wanna go over quickly to finish up tonight, I wanna go over quickly the three types of traffic. There are three types of traffic and I want to give credit for this idea to Russell Brunson, who I heard from and read in one of his books originally, um, the original funnel hacker and founder of ClickFunnels. Um, the first type of traffic that you're going to get to come to your sales page or your blog or your lead capture page is going to be traffic which you earn. Now, traffic which you, what signifies traffic that you earn is this is traffic that you are trading your time for, not your money. So when you go and you buy Facebook ads, that's not traffic you earn because you paid for that. But when you go on Facebook and you go join 50 groups of uh, young mothers, and then you go and you post tips for losing weight in those groups, and some of those people connect back with you, you're trading your time. You're going out and you're taking the time to create content and then to go out and spread that content. If you create a YouTube channel with exercise tips and you start creating videos and putting them on your YouTube channel and you're optimizing your videos so that they show up in the YouTube search, that's earning traffic. If you start blogging and creating a blog and then you do search engine optimization so that when people are doing search terms for things related to uh, young mothers who want to lose weight and that and, and so that your website will show up in the website searches, that's traffic that you're earning. So anytime that you're going out and you're trading your time for traffic, that's traffic that you're earning. Now, trading your time for traffic is great. Earning traffic is great because you're not putting out a lot of money. But the problem with it is it, it takes a long time to generate streams of traffic that you earn in most niches. It takes a long time to write blogs, create a presence, be out there long enough that you start showing up in the Google searches. You have to be in for the long haul. It's definitely a marathon, not a sprint in order to earn traffic. But it's a viable way to do it and it's a good way to get started and hone your message before you start actually putting out money. Now, that of course is the second type of traffic and the second type of traffic is traffic which you control. Now, paid traffic falls into the category of traffic that you control because when you run a Facebook ad, what you're doing is you're paying Facebook for the right to control a certain amount of their traffic for a period of time. They have all these people that are coming to Facebook. They have the attention of a large audience. And then what they are doing is they're selling a piece of that attention to you. So when you go out and you, and, and you buy the ads, they are taking a little part of their attention and they're letting you control it. And for a period of time, you control that. So any kind of paid traffic is traffic which you control. You didn't earn it. You didn't, uh, you, I guess, earn the money, and, but you paid for it, you know, or paid for the ability to be able to control it. So all kinds of paid advertising falls into traffic you control. If you cut a deal with another website owner where they advertise your product to their list or put a banner for their, for your product on their website, that's traffic that you're controlling. You probably cut a deal with them that either you're gonna promote their product and they're gonna promote yours in kind of a JV deal, you know, joint venture deal, or you're gonna pay them a commission. You know, if you have affiliate program or any kind of commission salespeople kind of program, that's traffic that you control. You're earning it from point of view of finding affiliates, but you know, you're ultimately paying for it through the commissions. So those are kinds of traffic sources that you control. And then the third type of traffic, uh, well, before we get on to that, the important thing about traffic that you control 
is yes, you have to pay money for it, but it's scalable. So unlike traffic, which you earn, which takes a long time to build and ultimately is not that scalable in the sense of being able to say, you want a thousand visitors tomorrow, traffic which you control is scalable. So if you have an offer and you put it together and you start sending some traffic, you start with a small budget, you start spending $10 a day on YouTube ads or Facebook ads. And then, and then as that's going, you notice, hey, you know, every time I spend $10, I get $15 back. Well, now you can scale it up and you can say, well, what if I spend $50? Am I going to get $75 back? And what if I spend $100 a day? Do I get $150 back? Because traffic that you control and paid traffic sources are almost infinitely scalable. So you can always buy more traffic. If you have an offer that converts, which of course we're going to talk about in this series, then you can always get more traffic as long as you can pay less for the traffic than you earn from the traffic, you have a profitable web business. And that is the goal of what you're trying to create with everything that we're doing here in these sessions. So traffic that you control is fast and scalable, but it costs money. And if you don't know what you're doing, you have to start out slowly in order to learn that so that you don't end up wasting a lot of money by trying to create large volumes of traffic and large volumes of sales before you have everything fine-tuned and proven to work well. So again, we'll talk about that more in future videos. And then the last type of traffic is traffic that you own. Now, what do I mean traffic that you own? So you have traffic that you earned that by trading your time for traffic. You have traffic that you control by trading your money for traffic. Well, how do you own traffic? Well, you own traffic when you create an audience. So when you create an audience of people who are following you, an audience of people who are know, like, who know, like, and trust you, that's how you get traffic that you own. So if you build up an email list of people who are interested in weight loss tips for young moms, well, when you send them emails, you have the ability to be able to put links in those emails and say, hey, come back and check out my latest blog post or hey, come check this new course that I just created. That's traffic that you own because you own that email list. As long as you keep those people happy and you're adding lots of value for them, they'll keep getting your emails, they won't unsubscribe, they'll keep opening your emails and they'll keep clicking your links. That's traffic that you own. Nobody can take it away. If you're using Aweber and Aweber decides that they go out of business, you know, you don't lose that traffic. You just take your list and you go to get response or convert kit instead. You still have ownership of that traffic because you have ownership of the list as long as you keep the list happy and as long as you keep adding value to them. And we're going to talk about that later in the series too. Traffic that you own is the best kind of traffic because traffic that you own is the highest conversions. When you have a relationship that you've built with an audience and that audience could be an email but it could also be a list of subscribers in youtube it could be people that follow you on instagram or facebook wherever you've built up a following of people that when you reach out and give them information they read it and respond that can create traffic that you own and because you have that relationship with them they're much more likely to convert they're much more likely to take action on the offers that you put in front of them because they trust you. So, and they like you and they want to support you. You know, they, if you're sharing lots of good information, good tips with them, they want to return the favor. And if they can buy some product on Amazon and you make a commission, they want that because they want to, to help the people that they're connected with. So, Traffic that you own is a very important part of building your business in the long term. And of course, once somebody has bought one product from you, they're much more likely to buy future products. So continuing to stay in touch with them and add value gives you the opportunity to be able to sell them other things in the future. And of course, that would all qualify as traffic that you own. So I think we've covered enough for tonight. Um, in our next session, what we're gonna cover is we're gonna cover crafting the ideal offer. Because like I said at the beginning, you can have all the traffic in the world, but if you have an offer that no one wants, you're not gonna get any conversions. 
and there are tips and techniques to making sure that you have an offer which is irresistible. And that's ultimately what you want to have if you want to get results from your marketing. And that's what we're going to cover in the next section. Now, one thing that I want you to keep in mind is that if you want to make sure that you keep seeing these videos, then make sure that you subscribe to my channel if you're watching this on YouTube or follow or like my page if you're watching this on Facebook. And the other thing you can do is you can go to gettrafficwise.com. So gettrafficwise, W-I-S-E, dot com. And there you can connect with me and you can get on the list so that when I'm doing these sessions in the future, you will get uh, immediate uh, notification that the session is coming up. And also, you'll be able to access all the recordings of this session in a special password protected backend area, which is just for the people that have subscribed at gettrafficwise.com. So go on over to gettrafficwise.com and just give me your name and your email address. And then I'll let you know when we have the next session tomorrow and you'll get access to the recordings of this and all the future sessions as we do them. And thanks so much for connecting with me here tonight and for watching this session. I hope you found it very useful and I hope you have the foundations that you need to know about being able to take the traffic that is coming into your website to your offers and convert it into signups and sales. So uh, thank you.